about Florida law. Ask an attorney. Just give him a call. This is Ask an Attorney, all about Ask Florida an law, attorney. with attorney Joe Pippen. If you have a legal Ask question, call Joe right now in Tampa. Call 813-287-5700. Anywhere else, toll free at 877-943-9673. That's 877-943-9673. The law office is open. And now your host, Joe Pippen. Good morning. Welcome to Ask an Attorney All About Florida Law. I'm attorney Joe Pippen, practicing attorney. The law office is open. Hey, if you have a legal question, all you have to do is to uh, call in here, and I'll give you the number in just a second. But your question can be about wills, trust, probate, guardianship, power of attorneys, health care surrogates, personal injury. It can be just about any area of law that you have a question or concern. If I know the answer, I'll be glad to share it with you. If I don't know the answer, we can get you the answer. So all you have to do is to, uh, you're listening to a live show on Saturday mornings from 8 to 8.52. And if you uh, have a legal question, all you have to do is to dial the number. It's 877-943-9673. That's 877-943-9673. And phone lines are open. We're open every Saturday morning, believe it or not, working on a Saturday morning just to help you. And if you have a legal question of any type, all you have to do is to uh, dial the number. A lot of our uh, discussions in between uh, callers it talks about estate planning and I was reading a very interesting article um, in family law yesterday so I thought I'd talk about that a little bit so it was an article about uh, premarital agreements and it was talking about maybe some of the unusual things that you can put in a premarital agreement that people don't normally think about <clears throat> so this article was suggesting if you have maybe you have one of the your your partner you're worried about that they're gonna they're uh, addicted to golf for example, and you're concerned they're gonna play too much golf after you get married, and not work on their relationship just work on their golf game. Actually, you can put uh, you can make have an agreement in the premarital agreement of of how much golf can be played. Like for example, you don't want your spouse to play golf you know all day Saturday and all day Sunday. So you can make an agreement that maybe they just play one day during the weekend. Or, and you can limit it if you want, if you can agree to it. Now the question becomes, is that just uh, a basis for more arguments and more unhappiness and something you're going to agree to that don't really want to do? I mean, that's possible. But you can think about that and talk about that and put provisions such as that in a premarital agreement. The uh, agreement can also be that that um, you can limit the amount of time an in-law might uh, be able to visit. You have an in-law that you want to uh, maybe just see once a week and you fear they're going to be over there every day. You can make an agreement as to amount of time an in-law can, uh, can, can come. You can make all kinds of agreements. Uh, Agreements about walking the dog, sharing the cost of a, an animal. You can make agreements about how much vacation will be taken. So it's just something to think about. Some people would think, well, no, that's just going to cause more arguments and it's going to help things and not do anything like that. But you also can make some agreements along the way, premarital agreements. And you can put in there, was talking to my family law attorney about this subject, and he said, well, some of those things would just be against public policy. You can always put a provision in the uh, agreement that if any one of the clauses is invalid, it doesn't disrupt the rest of the agreement. Hey, our first caller, let me give out the number is 877-943-9673. Phone lines are open. Let's go to Anna in Haines City. Hey, Anna, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Oh, okay, what can we do for you? Well, uh, first I'd like to know if you're not married and your companions, and you have a joint bank account, same car, everything's in your name. Um, when not one, one person dies, does it automatically go to the other one, or do you have to have a will to de declare it? Uh, jointly held assets automatically go to the survivor. So if you have a joint account and one of you died, would would belong to the survivor regardless of what the will says. Okay. 
so you don't really need no will. No, that's not true either, because uh, suppose you both die at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's not only about to each other, but it's to what would happen to the estate. You don't want a will because if you don't do a will, the state of Florida makes a will. And say your uh, your friend dies, you own everything jointly, it's yours, and you are so stressed out, you have a heart attack, and you die the next day, then you'd have nothing, and then the state of Florida decides where all the money goes. Okay. So you two can actually agree, if you like, you can agree to where the money goes, and your will can go to him, for example, and if he's not living, it could go 50% to your side of the family, 50% to his. You could do something like that, and y'all could make an agreement while you're living as to what happens to the estate. Okay. And how much does the wills cost? We charge 125 for a will. Okay. And we do have an office there in Davenport. Okay. And we're uh, at in Davenport. Let me give you the number there. It's um, 863-422-1370. It's 863-422-1370. Two, you can call the office, get 13, directions, 70. make an appointment. You can do... Uh, do all of those things there. Okay. All right, Anna. Okay, thank Thanks you. Thanks for calling. Bye. You're listening to Ask an Attorney all about Florida law. Again, I'm attorney Joe Pippen, practicing attorney. The law office is open. It's open for your question. You have a toll-free number, 877-943-9673. That's 877-943-9673. Phone lines are open if you have any type of... Your question actually helps other people who are listening. Um, so if you have a question, don't be shy. Maybe you'll get some help and direction. Get pointed in the right direction. And maybe you'll help other people that are listening. That's kind of the whole idea of the show is to help as many people as we, uh, as we both can. And although I might be helping you, you might be helping lots of other people just by calling in. So the toll-free number is 877-943-9673. So suppose you have a premarital agreement and things are rolling along great in your marriage. That would be the goal, right? So the things, and you want to change your premarital agreement. Can you do that? Well, you can actually override the provisions in a premarital agreement by uh, having a will or a trust dated later than the premarital agreement. So let's suppose you agree to give your spouse 25% um, of the estate. And you have a great marriage. You know, you've gone, gone along for 10 years or so, had a great marriage. You want to change that to be uh, 50%. You can actually do that in a will or trust because the provisions in a will or a trust after the premarital was signed can actually trump a provision in the premarital agreement. So you both agreed that the percentage would be something. You can need to do a modification of the premarital agreement, but probably the easier way is just to do something additional in the will or trust that takes care of the spouse. Your spouse is entitled to a big chunk of your estate if you don't have a premarital agreement. Your spouse can take your home and sell it. Say the home is just in your name and you're, uh, there's no premarital agreement. Your spouse has the right to sell that home and take half the proceeds and get 30% of the rest of the estate. And of course, that can be waived in a premarital agreement. But suppose you didn't do a premarital agreement. You, you both promised one another, oh, I wouldn't do that. Oh, I've heard that so many times. But then I see when someone dies that, that they do. And maybe they're pushed to do it by family, other family members. Maybe they're not quite as competent as they used to be, and maybe their children are pushing all of this legal action to get what they would eventually get the children. If they can get their parent to take it, then they can get it. So you see all kinds of things. Premarital agreement's a really smart thing to do on second marriages, particularly. But suppose you didn't do one, well, then you can do a postmarital. You can make all of these agreements in a postmarital agreement. Hey, I'm attorney Joe Pippen. You're listening to a live show on a Saturday morning. You have a, a number you can call in and ask a legal question. It's 877-943-9673. That's 877-943-9673. Phone lines are open.
to take your call. You're listening on multiple stations all over Florida. You're listening on broadcasting today from the Tampa area. And on that, you have uh, stations 570 AM, 910 AM, 860 AM, 930 AM. Those are all coming out of the, uh, out of the Tampa studios. You're listening to a community station in Sun City Center, Sun Radio. Uh, FM station there that covers the Sun City Center area. You're listening to Jacksonville station, perhaps. Uh, WBOB coming out of Jacksonville. We have offices in Jacksonville. We have offices in all of these locations where the, where the radio station uh, carries the signal. You're also listening perhaps to 90.3 FM out of Haines City, Florida. Maybe Ann or our first caller was listening to 90.3 FM. We have a station in Crystal River that carries the, the radio show as well. No matter where you're listening, you can call with a toll-free number. Eight seven, no matter where you are, actually, you can call with a toll-free number. 877-943-9673. That's 877-943-9673. Let's go to Judith in Sarasota. Hey, Judith. Hello. How are you today? Pretty good. What can we do for you? Well, I have a problem going on. I had a younger brother that passed away without a will. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, he owns his house, but extremely in debt. And out of the blue, we have these, uh, says we have a brother and sister that we've never really seen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They were adopted by my father, and, uh, you know, way back, uh, my mother and father were divorced in 55, and the thing is, uh, I think some attorney through some kind of a obituary mill or something contacted them <laughs> and said, you know, that they could uh, get from our state, which I, according to Florida law, they can because they're considered a brother and a sister. But the thing is, uh, the attorney told my attorney, he says, I won't just your fees, and I'm trying to think of this attorney for them is going to try to take a bunch of, bunch of money out of the estate when, he, to me, he's really not doing anything. He's from, a, like, on the other coast, Miami or somewhere. And uh, can, can we protest him, his fees, or will we know what his fees are even? All right, so your brother died. Just let me get my facts straight here. So your brother okay. died without a will. And, yes, and I have another brother. That's a blood brother. So we we're doing. So we're probating a statutory will, one made by the state, actually. Uh, well, there was no will. Uh, we contacted. Well, no, everyone. An no, everyone has a will because if you don't sign one, then there's one prepared by the state, basically for it's a statutory okay. will. Okay, that's what we did. We went to attorney, and he did everything for us, and and uh, you know. Uh, we ha he has already posted one time in the newspaper for debtors, and he's he's done all of that. Okay. And then after after about a month, we were he was contacted by this attorney out of Miami that we had a brother and sister that we really haven't seen or anything, you know, out of the blue that are adopted. Okay. And what's funny is they adopted the girl, and supposedly she had a child out of wedlock, and then they adopted the boys. So they adopted their grandson, too, which I was told by law, he's also considered a son, also considered our All right, brother. So, so you have an attorney representing you in this matter? Yes, we do. But uh, okay. I was wondering about the fees from uh, this other attorney. Okay. Oh, Judith, the problem is when you have an attorney, I can't really advise you because now I know you that you have an attorney. So... Mm -hmm. Your attorney can, uh, there's, just discuss it with your attorney. All fees can be challenged if you think they're unreasonable. So okay. your attorney, well, was, your attorney would know I'm that. what I'm asking, you know, if, if my attorney, we can ask our attorney to protest them. But if we don't know what they are, you yeah, know, I would just, like yeah, well, no, they, they will be uh, upcoming in, right in front of you before too much longer. So, oh, they will. Yeah, but the fees, you the uh, estate... Of course, they'll put a claim on the estate, perhaps, to get fees paid. But the estate eventually will have to have a full inventory and accounting of all the assets and all the fees that are paid. Oh, oh, yes, I know. And I figure when the estate's closed, we'll sell the house. They'll pay all the debtors, pay the attorney, and then they'll split what's left between us four, which it was this 
too until we got yeah. these people so, from so, nowhere, you know. <laughs> so you should discuss with your attorney the accounting of the uh, of the fees. If they haven't per been presented yet, they've just been threatened? Oh, I right? see. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, but and, really yeah, need to actually, they've only had one birth certificate as proof so far. So Yeah, well, they definitely have to prove they they were adopted if they're going to make a claim on the estate. So. Mm -hmm. All right? Okay. All right, thanks. Thank you. All right, you're listening to Ask an Attorney All About Florida Law. I'm attorney Joe Pippen, practicing attorney. The law office is open. Hey, do you have a question? You might be listening on uh, watching watching radio on Facebook Live. You might be watching on WeBeam TV. Um, so if you are, you can also call the show, of course. You have a toll-free number, 877-943-9673. Phone lines are open. And let's go to, uh, I'm guessing this is going to be Kathleen. Katherine. Catherine, <laughs> hello. Are good you morning. There? Good morning. What's your name? Catherine. Kathleen. Catherine. Catherine. Okay. So that you spell that with a C or K? K. Okay. And I bet it ends with R Y N. Correct. All right. There you go. You got it right. All right. <laughs> All right. I won't tell you how, how our, my producer spelled your name. See. <laughs> go ahead. Um, I was calling, I have a question regarding um, home association. We live in a subdivision where there's, quote unquote, a lot of dogs, and we have issues with the dogs defecating on our lawn and urinating on our lawns. And it's like every time we go to a meeting when we voice our opinion, it's like they're telling us if we're not happy in the subdivision, then we need to move. So I want to know what other options we have besides moving well who's telling you that who's telling you if you're not happy you should move the president the board president over the home association wow it's almost as if the dogs have rights and we don't well um catherine i have a um, an attorney that handles home association matters in our firm so let me give you his number if you want to talk to him off the air I think okay. I think you definitely have rights. His name is Jim. So our office number is 727-586-3306. And he's, okay. he's extension okay. 1116. 116. Okay. Good. Yeah. So give him a call and you can discuss it and see uh, if you what your options are. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye now. You're listening to Ask an Attorney All About Florida Law. If you have a legal question, the phone lines are open. 877-943-9673. That's 877-943-9673. Phone lines are open if you have a legal question. And if I can help you in any way, I would be more than glad to. So what if, suppose you have an upside down, you're wondering whether you really need a will. I had this question come up yesterday, actually, or a will or a trust. You come in and say, well, my house is upside down. Uh, there's no equity in the house. And all of my financial accounts have uh, named beneficiaries on them. And so I don't really see where, you know, I need, I need anything. Is that a good thought? Or why do I need something? So the person asking me this question was, uh, you know, they were in their 40s, 50s, maybe early 50s. And I said, well, look, well, they, you know, by the time you pass away, there could be lots of equity in your house. And so it's going to make it a lot easier to put the home into a trust to where they can deal with it. I mean, you can negotiate with the mortgage company. You can negotiate with uh, buyers. You can, and maybe there'll be some equity in there. And as far as your financial accounts, paid on death accounts, the problem with those is if you become incapacitated before death, then uh, if it's inside a trust, perhaps you can your successor trustee can manage it all for your benefit in a lifestyle that you're accustomed to. So you know there are options you have, and making it could make it a lot easier and better for yourself by having a trust, a power of attorney, 
healthcare surrogate living will than just not to do anything with your estate, which means that the um, now this uh, first this last caller about the brother passed away and all these people had been adopted. Um, if the person had had a will, he could have left the will, then would have been enforced. And he could have put a provision in there. I have adopted children that I want to omit from my will if that was his plan. He could have done that, or he could have included them all. And the distribution to the estate doesn't have to be all equal. So if he adopted people a long time ago that weren't in his life, for example, but wanted to remember them, he could give them something, but it wouldn't have to be all equal. If you die, the state of Florida makes a will for you and in this case, if the brother that died did not have uh, children uh, or did not have um, other family members, you know, if he had died and had a will, he, they would have been in done, his estate would be distributed exactly like he wanted it to. All right, if you have a legal question, again, the phone lines are open at 877 943 nine six seven three that's eight seven seven nine four three nine six seven three phone lines are open to be more than glad to help you if i possibly can so people uh one of the most common questions i get in estate planning okay they want the number again for uh the hoa which was his his name is jim Attorney Jim Lonkarski, his number is 727-586-3306, extension 116. Caller called back and wanted me to repeat the number, maybe a little slower. 727-586-3306, extension 116. Let's go to Ron in Palm Harbor. Good morning. I... Uh... I have a question for you. Uh, I have a living trust that I had uh, done through uh, a company, you would call it, I guess. I don't know if yeah, I'm Yeah, LegalZoom or somebody? That. Excuse me? LegalZoom? Yes. Okay. And uh, it's my wife and myself. Uh, we have a condo that's paid off for. Uh, paid off, uh, have a car that's paid off, uh, don't have a, a ton of money, but uh, we have a few uh, in uh, uh, in the bank and in... Mm -hmm. uh, 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 All right, sir, can you just ask me a question? Yeah, uh, the question is, with the uh, living trust, is there any taxes or probate or anything involved in that if uh, I should uh, exit first? No, if you own things jointly between you and your wife and you die first, there are no taxes between husband and wife. And now the exemption that a, a person can leave tax-free on the estate side, the estate tax is $11 million uh, each. Well, I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> All right, let me ask you a question. Did you do, uh, do you have a single family home? It's a, uh, it's not a condo. It's a something you, it's like a town home. Okay. All right. So did you put your home into your living trust? Yes. And you did the deed yourself? Uh, yes. Uh, the deed, uh, I actually went down and received it. So I have a copy of the deed, or the deed itself. I'm really unfamiliar with all this stuff. But your documents should really be reviewed to make sure you did it all right. I've most of the time when I review documents that someone tried to do themselves, there uh, there are errors in there that would cost the estate a lot of money. And for example, a lot of people may do legal zoom, but they don't know how to do the deed of their property to the trust. Or if they do do the deed, the deed is done improperly. And there's language in the those. Uh, you probably didn't read every paragraph of the trust, and there's some things in there that you might not like the outcome on. So most people would have the document reviewed and uh, just to have peace of mind that everything's okay with it. 
Okay. Uh, so just make sure I have it reviewed by an attorney. Yes, sir. And uh, and that's it. Yes, sir. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you very much All for right. your time. Thank you. Bye now. Phone lines are open. 877 is the phone number. 943-9673. You have a legal question of any type, be more than glad to try to help you. Let's go to uh, Brian in Bradenton. Hi, Joe. Thanks for taking my call. Thank you. No problem. What can I do for you? Uh, just, just a couple of quick things. Uh, on, a, on a will, we've had a will done, and but trust, but we don't even know where it is. Is it filed somewhere legally with the state? And I don't think the attorney that did it is even in business anymore. No, uh, living trusts are usually not filed. So basically, if you can't find it, you would probably have to do what's called a restatement. A restatement? Yep. So you need an original document. So if you can't find, a lot of times attorneys don't hold the originals anyway. You could call the Florida Bar Association and ask if there was uh, an inventory attorney that took over the practice of the attorney that did the document for you. So call the Florida Bar and ask them what again I'm at. All right, so uh, when an attorney retires or dies uh, along the way, they should have appointed an attorney as a, like an inventory attorney of his files. Okay. So you might want to try to track the – but it's, it's a ch good chance that the attorney wouldn't have held the original documents anyway and would just have a copy of your documents. So, so, so if you're – we were to pass away, our offspring would have to have the original document. Yes. To be valid. Yes. I'm probably holding it. What do you mean? Do I probably have the original document? Yeah, I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. I mean, they would have gave us the original document, obviously, right? You, you talking to me now? <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. They would have given us the original document, right? The attorney. Well. Some attorneys keep the originals, and some, um, some most, I would say, probably give them to you. Okay. There are some attorneys that keep originals. Um, okay. My practice in my firm is the client walks out with their originals and an extra copy. Okay. So, and then we, right. we have an electronic copy that I can always refer to with my notes and other, other um, I have a copy of everything plus all my notes and meetings and stuff like that, you know, on file. But that's but all I'm electronic good. copies. If we were to pass, is, is it, is, would a copy not be valid then, or does it have to be the original? If you uh, had a probate issue, the original will has to be filed with the court. They don't accept copies. Oh, well. Okay, and then one more quick question. Uh, our son went into a rehab, and I, I just want you to, rec if you have an attorney, you can recommend to me. He went into a rehab facility, and you know, after being interviewed by 10 different people, they decided to Baker Act him. Mm -hmm. uh, the psychiatrist, well, we, then they, so they sent him to a facility. Well, a Baker Act is normally at least three days. Well, he ended up never even getting admitted. They, he sat in the lobby for hours, and one of the security guards beat him up. So, I mean, it may have been, he may have been mouthy or whatever, but uh, then they let him out, so they never admitted him. They let him out with no phone, no wallet, no ID. Uh, down in Miami. Yeah, down in, in a different city from where we were at. He wasn't accepting him. Right. So for some reason, they didn't admit him, and now they're sending us hospital bills for five, six thousand dollars $6,000. So I just don't know if we, if, if we can, if you have an attorney, you can recommend that we can do something about well, that. Well, um, how old is your son? 23. And did you obligate yourself for the hospital bills or any other bills? No, but we don't want his whole career ruined financially because of these bills, for one thing. Well, and are they, they addressed to you or him for the bills? To him. Okay, I thought they were addressed to you. Um, no. Yeah, why don't you contact me and I'll tell you how to find, uh, p perhaps find an attorney that might be able to help you. Okay, so just call you at your office? Yeah, I'll give out my contact information here shortly. So you can either oh. call or send me an email. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Appreciate your help, Joe. All, All right, bye-bye. Right, All right, let's go to, uh, that was Brian, let's go to David in Bradenton. David, are you there? Yes, I am. What can I do for you, sir? You... Well... Two things. One is I want to just tell you that I listen to you all the time, and I really appreciate what you're doing for people. 
Well, thank you. That's number one. Number two, um, I uh, have been down in Bradenton area for about uh, almost three and a half years now taking care of my mom and dad. And my dad passed away. And uh, I have a brother who's passed away and uh, two sisters that are still alive up in New England. And uh, it was brought to my attention last week that they had some sort of a trust, which um, my sister was, uh, I guess, in charge of or whatever, however that works. When I questioned her on it, she seemed to say to me that she had no idea of who uh, did the trust or anything about the trust. And my mom is nine, almost 92. She's getting dementia. She's having problems with things. And I think it's time that we liquidate her assets and uh, proceed with, you know, an uh, assisted living or whatever the case may be. So my question, I guess, is is that how do I approach this? Because I have no idea or legal knowledge of what a trust is about and also uh, how this actually uh, uh, gets uh, started or however right. that works. So you think your mother already has a trust? They're telling me that she does. My sister admits that she knows about it, but she's not giving me any information. So um, is your sister paying the bills, for example? No, I'm the one that's taking care of my mom and dad down here. Well, my dad's passed away, but I'm taking care of my mother, and I'm the one that's doing everything. Are, are you aware and, of all of your mother's assets? Uh, for the most part, yeah. Okay, but, and the assets are not titled in the name of a trust? Well, I have no idea. Okay. I have no idea what even a, what they All right, well, no, no, hold, hold on. You're telling me you're aware of all of your mother's assets? What she owns, yes. So then that means you should be aware of how the accounts are titled. So for account, are, are the accounts titled just in mother's name? Or do they say mother's name, trust, and the date of the trust? No, I have no idea where, where this trust is. No, sir. Um, no, sir. Hold on. You're not following me. You don't have to okay. know where the trust is. Right now I'm trying to figure out how, you, how your mother's assets are titled. The trust might well, not, there might be a trust, but nothing in it. So, your mother. Well, exactly, exactly. That's what I'm feeling because she doesn't have a lot, but she does have equity in her home, and she has um, a slight, small mortgage on the. Um, yeah. The home. Oh, well, I could go. I mean, I could go online and find out how your mother's home is titled. So I'm either going to find out it's titled in just your mother's name, or I'm going to find out that it's titled in her name, trustee, and the date of her trust. Yeah, and also, too, I guess the complication being is if it was in my mom and dad's name, and my dad has passed away. No, it would automatically go to the survivor. So you just, just it would, a, okay. Yeah, just okay. a death that certificate. That was part of my question. Yeah. So, so what I need to do is <clears throat> probably to call you directly and sit down and talk about this. Yeah, that would be all Yeah, that would be great. I could look up on the county records so how the property is titled, the home, and then you could bring me whatever statements you have for the financial accounts. I could take a look and and advise you whether those are in the trust or not, and then we could proceed from there. Yeah. Now, uh, do you have an office in the Bradenton area? We have an office in Sun City Center. Just okay, not that far away. Phone. Yep. Okay. Because, and that would be the number that you give out normally on your show. Yeah, I'm going to give out the number here shortly, so. Yeah, that's okay. I'm going to be listening to All you right. anyways. Like I said, I, I appreciate what you do, and All I right. hope everybody else does. Well, thank you so much for calling. Thank you. All right. We do have, uh, an, uh, we do have an office in Lakewood Ranch as well. I don't uh, go to that office, but the Sun City Center office is... Probably a half an hour or so away from there, so it's not a big trip from Bradenton to Sun City Center. And But if you wanted to meet with Attorney Dennis Moses, goes to the Lakewood Ranch office, uh, that would be your choice. All right, let's go to uh, Joe in Sun City Center. Uh, good morning. I've got a quick question. We just bought a house down here. Uh, it's in my wife's name and my name. We also own a house in Wisconsin. 
and my wife's name and I name, and I'd become a Florida resident, just myself, and then have the house uh, uh, as a residency down here in Florida. So your wife would be a resident somewhere else? Well, she doesn't know if she wants to become a Florida resident. We have a house both in Wisconsin and here, but as I do and become a Florida resident, yes. So the answer is anybody can become a Florida uh, resident. Probably just need the primary uh, proof of that would be your driver's license, voter's card. I mean, there's some other things you can do to supplement that. But basically, you could become a Florida resident and you could get the homestead. The problem is, if your wife's going to be a resident somewhere else, I don't. you probably wouldn't be able to get two homesteads. Wisconsin does not have a homestead. Okay. So, so it, you know, your wife, um, sure, you could become a Florida resident and get, get homestead rights. That'd be a way to do that. Okay, that would answer my question. You're very helpful. Thank you. All have right. a nice day. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. All right, if you'd like to contact our office, also if you'd like the free estate planning poster sheet, tells you all about uh, your options in estate planning and, and gives you enough information to make a good choice about what you'd like to do, you can uh, either contact us for an appointment or the mailing of the poster sheet or both. Our numbers are, the phone number is 1-800-226-3529, 1-800-226-3529, extension 200. You can email me at joe, J-O-E, at A-T-T-Y-P-I-P.com. So you can email me at joe, J-O-E, at A-T-T-Y-P-I-P dot com, either for an appointment or the poster sheet. You know, or you could text me at 727-667-3967. Let's go to Linda in St. Pete. Hello. Hey, Linda. Um, I spoke with you five weeks ago about uh, my mother's death and, and a will and problems with and um, things have changed, and I'm supposed to, I signed the papers for the, the house, and we're going to split it three ways, but um, I'm very worried that, about where I'm at, and I'm also, you know, I get food stamps and things, and I need, is there any way I can make a, a conference call with you because I'm bedridden? I'm in a really dark place right now, and I'm afraid I'm going to get the, have it stolen, and I don't know where to put it so they don't take my benefits away. Can I please get an appointment? And I'll pay for it. That's no problem. But I have nobody to help me. And what do you need done exactly? Um, I'm getting an inheritance, and um, I need some advice on where to put it. With, I see. With, How to protect it and still get your benefits. Yes. How and soon I'm, are you going to be receiving the inheritance? Uh, how soon did you say? Yeah. I signed the papers um, last Monday. And um, as soon as it clears the bank, the lady already bought the home. So I, I guess it's going to be the check I hear is going to be on all three of our names. My sister's in Minnesota. My brother's. Say, uh, no, they usually her. do like three checks. I mean, oh, they would. Okay. Uh huh. They each give you uh, a portion. How? What's the approximate amount of your uh, portion? Four, four, about fourteen, I hear. Yeah. Why don't but you give I, me I, a call, call during the week, and uh, mm -hmm. I have an attorney that does uh, the type of trust that you need. So I can get you in contact with her, and then we'll go from there. Okay, I have a real trust with you, and I'm, I'm glad I found you. Um, maybe she could give me some advice as far as where I can, how I can get out of here since I have it, because... There are people that want to take us home, and that's been done many times before because I am disabled. Yeah. Um, I will right, we'll get you some help. I'll be glad to do that. Oh, thank you so much, and I'll pay for it. No problem out of, out of that. All right, no problem. Okay, right. so I'm the, I call what number again? The 800 number? No, call uh, the local numbers for uh, Pinellas is 586-3306. Huh? And go to extension 200. And just tell them. Um, just tell them to, uh, to ask me to give you a call. Okay. All, All right. right. All right. All right. Thanks. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. We have about 10 minutes left in the show. If you'd like to call the show, you have a toll free number, which is 877 943 9673. That's 877 943 9673. Phone lines are open. Let's go to Stephanie. 
good morning. Stephanie, how are you? Fantastic. I have a question for you. I know it'll be a quick one. Um, I have joint ownership of a vehicle. To sell it, do both parties have to be present to sign title? Does the words on the title say or? Uh, it's, uh, we both have joint ownership, according to the bank. Okay, but what does the title say? Does It the, It says and. And? Yes. You both have to sign. We both a lot have of to car sign. A lot of, lot, lot of car titles say or. Okay. And or means either one could sign. If, uh, it says and. If it says and, then you're both going to have to sign. Can I have someone sign for me if I'm not present? If they have a power of attorney signed by you, giving them the power to sign, yes. Okay. Well, thank you so much, and right. you have a wonderful day. All right. Thank you, Stephanie. Bye. You're listening to Ask an Attorney All About Florida Law. You might be watching Ask an Attorney All About Florida Law on Facebook Live or WeBeamTV.com. And no matter where you are, you have a toll-free number at 877 877- 943-9673. That's 877-943-9673. Phone lines are open and more than glad to help you. If you'd like to contact our office, you can uh, do that in multiple ways. You can call our toll-free office number 1-800-226-3529, extension 200. You can email me at joe, J-O-E, at A-T-T-Y-P-I-P dot com. You can text me at 727-667-3967. Let's go to Frank in Citrus County. Hey, Frank. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. And you? All right. Listen, I got a question on... uh... Life insurance? Yes, sir. I signed up with this company about 15 years ago. And I still got the document that says I was sick that my uh, monthly rate would never go up. Mm -hmm. And then with the last six months, it's gone up $15. And I called them about it. And they told me that there was a stipulation in there that... Once I reached 55, it would be an, an, added, an added extra $5. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm 65, and I didn't have nothing at 55 or 60, but they said every five years it goes up $5. And they hit me with a $15 bill all at once on top of what I already have. Now, mm-hmm. the stipulation was that my, my you know monthly rate would never go up. Is there anything I could do about that? Well... I would send, ask them to send you in writing a copy of the provision in the contract that allows them to increase the rate. Right, but if they miss, you know, like I said. Well, are they, they going they, backwards? Are they going to try yeah, to? Yeah, they went back to when I was 55 and 60 because I never got a raise. All right. And, and now I just turned 65. And they're saying you owe X number of dollars for the back? Excuse me? Are they going after? No, they, for, just, they just put it all into one bill. They said, you know, they, they missed it, but I got to start paying so fifteen dollars more a month because fifty five, sixteen, and sixty five. Well, you should probably be lucky they didn't try to go after all the back money owed. Ask them. My advice to you is to write to them and ask them to send you the provision in writing. You know, co- copy of the por- portion that says they have the right to increase it at those a- age limits. Because okay. I can't just well, tell you I, that's I invalid without, uh, you know, it. without you having the copy of the document. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Well, if you have a copy of it, can you find that paragraph? Oh, I can't find it in there. Okay, that's why it's I'm just, asking you, I, sir, it's, sir, it's, sir, it's, sir, it's, sir, it's, sir, that's why I'm asking you to write to them and tell them to send you a copy of the provision that allows them to do that. Okay. All right. Thank you, thank you for your time. All right, thank you. Let's go to Helen in Sun City Center. Good morning. Hey, Helen. Uh, I have a question for Joe. All right, go ahead. And uh, I have my will made out, and I have my niece as executor, and the uh, second executor, in case she's not able to fulfill the job, I have my nephew. 
Mm-hmm. My nephew has recently had a stroke and is not doing well. And I wondered if I have to or had to change that, do I have to see an attorney on my will? All right, so the nephew is, what's he, second place? Yes, sir. And you have a third choice? No, I don't at this time. I have one I'm going to put if my nephew is not able to fulfill the job. Well, your your nephew has been nominated by you, so right. he doesn't have to accept the job if you pass on. So the question is, you know, you want to take risk that the first one that you named will be there and be able, and then you don't have a valid backup, or do you want to just uh, pay a little bit to go ahead and redo the to amend the document to name someone else as, as to be in second place? Well, my first executor is my niece, and she's capable of doing it. And my second one was my nephew, and he's had a stroke. And he's the one that I'm questioning yeah, you Yeah, I but understand. So if you want a backup that can do the job, you're going to have to amend your document. I will. Yes, ma'am. Okay, that was my question. All I right. Think, thank All right. you very much. All right, no problem. Thank you. Let's go to Carol in Riverview. Uh, good morning, Joe. Hey, Carol. Uh, thank you for taking my call. Um, I have a question for you. I I want to, I'm opening up a, a new business, um, and I want to know what's the difference between um, sole pro, um, pro, um, ridership or, or LLC? Well, an LLC is a different entity. I mean, it's like a corporation, and so it's a different entity that you would um, use to run your business out of, mainly for asset protection. Whereas a sole proprietor just means it's just you as the entity with with no separate entity created. So the difference so between you. sole ownership is just uh, go, going along with you individually running the business or you creating an entity where the business can be in, in a different name under an LLC or a different entity. So what, kind of business, what kind of business is it? It's an um, adult family care home. So you would own the home itself, the property? Uh, I might, but I don't have to. I could um, rent, and the if I rent, then the person that I would rent from would have to know that I'm doing a business out of there yeah. and everything. Yes. All right. It sounds like you should definitely own that type of business because you're going to have employees, right? Um, eventually, but not right now. But yes, eventually. Well, I think it'd be a timing thing, and you might want to just time it so you start the LLC when you start to hire employees. As long as you're an individual, you could probably run it by yourself as an individual, sole proprietor. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you have hire one employee, think about a different, different entity, some type of corporation or LLC. Okay, and then um, do, do I do do you need? I mean, do you handle those things, yes, or ma'am. can I handle that on my own? No, I can. Well, you you could try to do it on your own, but you'd be better off having an attorney at least create the LLC or, or corporation for you. Okay, and I have your information, so I know how to contact. You. All right, great. Right. Okay, thank you so much. You have a great day. Thanks. You too. Thank you. All right. So you're listening to Ask an Attorney All About Florida Law. You might be watching Ask an Attorney All About Florida Law on Facebook or WeBeam TV. If you'd like to contact the office, you have a toll-free number, 1-800-226-3529. That's 1-800-226-3529. You can email me at Joe, J-O-E, at attypip.com. By the way, our website is attypip.com, 100-page website full of information. I'm sure you would find some of it uh, helpful to you. You can send me an email again at joe, J-O-E, at attypip.com. You can text me, 727-667-3967. You have a great weekend. So long.